Okay, so so far our programs have been pretty boring. To make our programs more interesting, let's see how we can define some variables. This is again following Strasstrup section 2.2.2. Okay, so here's another example program. Now in the first line, we say int x equals 5. So this line is basically doing two things. We are introducing the name x into our program, and we're saying that x is going to stand for an object of, of type int. Okay? And now we're also initializing x with the value 5. Okay? So now x, uh, we're assigning x the value 5 at the moment that it is created. Okay, in this example, we declare an integer uh, variable named x, but we do not initialize it with a value. And it's important to note that in C++, x is not going to be automatically initialized. Okay, so this line here is not going to give x some default value like 0. So at this point, x is actually uninitialized. X, you know, it just refers to some place in memory, and when we print out x here, it's just going to print out whatever was already written at that place in memory. So we cannot know in advance what the behavior of this program is going to be. And this is called unbehind, undefined behavior. So it's a very common pitfall in C++. And C++ programmers love to talk about undefined behavior. And it's so common that, you know, we usually just refer to it as UB, undefined behavior. You know, I think it helps to understand why the program has this behavior so you can avoid making this mistake of using uninitialized variables. And this design decision was really made for performance. Basically, you know, C++ always assumes that the programmer knows what they're doing and gives the, the programmer, you know, ultimate freedom to control what happens. So, for example, if you wanted to declare a million ints and then you were going to immediately, you know, assign, read some data from a file to assign these ints a value, then this design decision here might be useful because if you're going to immediately assign the ints to some other value, then you don't want to waste the time to initialize them with some default value like zero. Okay, so there there might be a place for uh, you know not initializing your variables. You know if you're really focused on some performance application, but my advice is to always initialize your variables. Okay, especially for this course, um, we care more about writing bug-free programs than optimizing performance. So you know just always initialize your variables. We want to avoid this kind of undefined behavior of using a variable which is uninitialized. And Strasstrup actually gives this advice in his book. He says, don't introduce a name until you have a value for it. So I think that is the best practice to follow. Here we initialize a Boolean variable with the value true. And this code has a mild surprise in it. So it will print out this course is great one instead of this course is great true and if we were to initialize b to be false then it would print out this course is great zero instead of this course is great false uh, so if you want to print out true or false instead of zero or one then you can comment out this this line that's commented there uh, and then a boolean will be printed out as true or false instead of zero or one so unlike, for example, Python, C++ is a statically typed language. So once we declare x to be an int, we cannot then assign it to be something else that cannot be converted into an int. Okay, so this little code fragment here would not compile trying to assign x to be the string hello, because that cannot be interpreted as an int. But if the types don't match, the compiler will still try to do an implicit conversion in order to make it work. 
So for example, here, uh, we initialize an int x with value 5, and then we assign it the value 3.14. And this code will compile with no complaints, but it does do an implicit conversion. Okay, so the value that will be printed out here is actually 3. Okay, so this floating point number, 3.14, is silently converted into the integer 3. So this is an implicit conversion because the compiler doesn't tell you that this is happening, uh, so you might be totally unaware of it. And, and this you know, could lead to bugs in your program. So this is another example that C++ just trusts that you know that what you're doing and will just do it without complaining. So as an aside, let me introduce a little bit of terminology here. So when we give x a value at the time it is created, uh, we call this initializing x. And the second line here, x already exists as a name in our program, and we're just changing its value, and that's called an assignment. So in the second line there, we're assigning x the value 3. Okay, so that's uh, you know two common words that we're going to use, initializing and assigning. So impl implicit conversions can happen uh, in initialization as well. So for example, here we say a boolean b equals 53. Again, the compiler is not going to complain. Uh, this will compile just fine. And it's going to convert b, uh, it's going to convert 53 to the value true. Okay, and likewise, on the second line, int x equals 3.14, uh, that's going to initialize x with the value 3. So let's talk about these implicit conversions. So implicit conversions with respect to a Boolean. Um, so any assigning the Boolean any numeric value will be implicitly converted to true or false. And zero is interpreted as false. And any non-zero numeric value is interpreted as true. Uh, with an int, um, a floating point number, if you try to assign an int a floating point number, then that floating point number is going to be converted to an int by truncating towards zero. Okay, so for example, if you say int x equals 3.99, that's going to initialize x to be 3. So we just completely drop the part after the decimal point uh, and end up with 3. And if we say int y equals negative 3.99, Again, we drop the part after the decimal point, and y will be initialized to be negative 3. Okay, so this is ca called truncation towards 0. So sometimes it is useful to make use of these implicit conversions, um, especially with Boolean values. But I think it's always a good idea to communicate the conversion in your code and be explicit about it. So you can do this by casting from one type to another. So this code snippet here has the exact same behavior as the previous one, but now we're making those conversions that were implicit, we're making them explicit. Okay, and so for example, in the first line, we say static cast, and then in the ankle brackets there, we put the type that we want to cast to, uh, so in this case a boolean, and then in the parentheses, we put the number that we want to cast to a boolean. Okay, so static cast bool of 53. So now we're explic explicitly converting 53 into a boolean. And this will again follow the same rules that I just talked about. Any non-zero numeric value will be mapped to true, and zero will be mapped to false. Okay, so this just communicates that, hey, I know that there's a conversion happening there, and I, I, you know, I want it to happen. I'm aware of it, and I intend it. And anyone who reads our code now knows that, hey, oh yeah, this person wants to do that. It's not just an accident that they weren't aware of. So initializing a variable in C++, it's slightly annoying because it's one of the first things that we want to do, but it's surprisingly complicated, and there are many different ways to do it. Part of this has to do with the history of C++, uh, you know, wanting to be backwards compatible with C. And so it had to adopt uh, the initialization, initialization practices of C, 
uh, and then later introduced its own initialization practices. So in C++11, a new method to initialize a variable was introduced called brace initialization. And this was kind of introduced to clean up the landscape of initialization to be a, a uniform method of initialization. And it has some additional nice properties, which we'll talk about in a couple minutes. So brace initialization is easy to use. You just put the value you want to initialize to between brackets. Okay, so this code will initialize b to be true, and the next line will initialize x to have the value 3. If we don't put anything between the brackets, then the variable is going to be initialized to a default value. Um, for, for most numeric built-in types, this is going to be like zero initialization. So a Boolean is going to default to uh, false, and an int is going to, uh, in this case, will be initialized with the value zero. So a nice property of brace initialization, which distinguishes it from uh, other kinds of initialization is that it does not allow conversions. So remember that we could say bool b equals 53 and that compiled with no problem. It just complicitly, implicitly converted 53 into true. But if we try to initialize b to the value 53 using brace initialization, then the compiler uh, will actually alert us that there's a conversion going on here, and it throws an error. So it says, error, narrowing conversion of 53 from int to bool. Okay, so this code's not going to compile. So similarly, similarly, if we try to brace initialize an integer with a floating point value, this is not going to compile. And again, it's going to tell us that there's, some, that, that there's an error, that there's some conversion going on here. Now, I know it's very familiar and intuitive to just write int x equals 3. And it's fine if you want to keep doing that. But I do encourage you to use brace initialization as much as possible. We want as much help from the compiler as we can get. And using brace initialization, the compiler will alert us if there are any conversions that are happening. So if we do make a typo, you know, or just a slip of the mind, when we want to float, we say int instead, then the compiler will alert us that something is going on there. So I think it's always good to try to get as much help from the compiler as possible, and brace initialization will help you do that.